Okay, so you made it through all the different threats of biodiversity. You made it through the very, very, very long section of climate change. Um, and there's just a small amount of things I want to talk about to kind of sum up and talk about how these multiple threats to biodiversity can interact. Um, so it would be a lot easier if um, fixing biodiversity or even fixing conservation of a particular species involved dealing with only one threat. Unfortunately, most species have more than one factor that's um, causing them to decline. And sometimes it's one factor in one part of their geographic range and another factor in another part of their geographic range. Sometimes these different factors interact and have um, other consequences. Um, so this shows effects um, on amphibians and it shows places where um, these different factors interact. So in A, um, the red is where climate change is posing a problem for amphibian species and you can see we have frogs on the top, salamanders in the middle, and Sicilians on the bottom. And some of you may not know what a Sicilian is. It is the third group of amphibians that look kind of like a large worm. Um, but they're actually an amphibian, so they have all the um, basic characteristics that frogs and salamanders have, but they don't have any legs. Um, so, you can see here the red is um, where there are species that are negatively impacted by climate change, and the orange is where they're negatively impacted by chytridiomycosis, which is that um, dis fungal disease that's been um, causing extinctions of amphibians. And the yellow is the overlap between the threats. And so you can see there's little dots of yellow in here. There's some yellow here in Europe, here in Europe, a little bit in Asia. Panel B shows the overlap between climate change and land use, where the yellow is that overlap. And so you can see that there's some overlap for frogs in South America and Africa. There's a little bit of overlap in Asia for salamanders and a little bit of overlap in South America um, for Sicilians. Um, the final one shows the overlap between um, chytrid and land use change where the yellow again shows the overlap. Um, so we can see that sometimes species um, are dealing with multiple threats at the same time. Um, we also get something that is a little harder to understand called synergistic effects. And that's when two or more threats interact to have a greater impact than you'd ex expect by examining each separately. And these can be non-intuitive. So one way this could happen is that, um, so for example, maybe land use affects them by, um, by one and chytrid affects them by one, but when you put them together, the effect is three. Um, and so one and one obviously doesn't equal three, which means that when you put the two things together, the effect is much larger. A second kind um, of kind of interaction you can get is something called a carryover effect. And this is the persistent of effects after the threat is over. Um, and so an example of this would be when a tadpole is exposed to a contaminant, um, that tadpole then goes through metamorphosis and becomes a frog. It leaves the pond, it's not being exposed to the contaminant anymore, but it still doesn't survive as well as frogs that came from ponds without the contaminant. And so that's a carryover effect. They're still being negatively affected even though that contaminant isn't there, isn't um, interacting with them anymore. Um, so this is an example and it's a little bit complicated. Um, it, includes both a synergistic and a carryover effect. So these are um, southern leopard frogs and they were raised in ponds with cadmium or no cadmium. Um, and so you can see these are the different treatments at the tadpole stage. So zero cadmium, five milligrams of cadmium or 18 milligrams of cadmium. 
And then they put the frogs out in either a forest or a field. So because the cadmium is gone, any effect, any difference from cadmium is going to be considered a carryover effect. Um, a synergistic effect is the interaction, meaning that um, the effect of cadmium is different in the forest or field, and it's not intuitive. And so this shows that in the control, um, so no cadmium, so when they were tadpoles, there was no cadmium, they do better in the forest than the field. But if they have cadmium, they actually do better in the field than the forest. Um, and so this interaction is the synergistic effect. The carryover effect is the fact that the cadmium is still affecting them um, even after the cadmium is gone when they've left the pond and moved into a field or forest. All right, so that's the end of threats to biodiversity. Um, there are a lot of them, and I know that that took a very long time. Most of the next few chapters will be a lot shorter, um, but we will refer back to these threats as we're talking about um, conservation um, and how to help species and help biodiversity um, persist and do better. So. Um, the next chapter is also going to be a little depressing because we're going to talk about extinction, um, but after that we'll start talking about how to fix these problems.